All right, it's great to see people arriving, and um, I just want to give you a little heads up. You know, I'm going to play my music or cafe theme. That's not going to be using Muse sounds, so you're just going to be hearing basic uh, Muse score for playback. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, just get that going so we hear, uh, you know, the usual thing that we might hear at the beginning of one of these cafes. All right, everyone, so this is Mark Sabatella with Mastering MuseCore, and this is my MuseCore Cafe, uh, my regular Wednesday series where we talk about using MuseCore, some aspect of it, and today is really special because after all the hype, <laughs> literally it's been, I don't even know, more than a year, a couple of years, I don't know, it's been a long time hearing about this Muse Sounds thing that's um, going to be uh, revolutionary and, and just give incredible playback uh, capabilities to MuseScore, uh, it's finally here in beta form, right? So it's not, you know, the final deal or anything like that. It's beta. Um, let me uh, get up my chat window here, make sure uh, things are okay. And um, so we're going to be listening to it and talking about it, talking about the things, you know, how to be taking advantage of it, how to use it, and so forth. So what I want to do here is... Uh, I want to first show how to install it and get it going on another on, on my Windows computer. But before I do that, I want to give you a taste. All right? Um, okay, uh, Marla, you have raised your hand. Hi, Marla. What's uh, what's up? Um, so there is a raise hand feature. If you're just trying it out, that's great. But if it's just a hi, then that's awesome too. Um, <laughs> So uh, the raise hand feature, I, I don't normally use much and check on it or anything, but uh, it would be a way eventually that I would have of uh, noticing that someone has, oh my gosh, you don't hear sound? Um, does, does anyone else not hear sound? Okay, sounds fine for everyone else. So Frank, um, yeah, not sure what to, uh, what to be doing. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to first give you a, um, an actual taste of uh of the uh um how this thing sounds and i'm going to try to do it from muse score i know from previous experience that trying to play back in muse score uh anything complicated while streaming can overload my system so my plan b is to play it back from musescore.com this is not the orchestra score that i showed you before this is a different orchestra score one that is probably a better showcase this is the one that you saw me entering i played it for uh to demo vsts and i used it to talk about um the import of uh, uh, music XML files from Finale. And I, it took a little while to get that all going and get it all set up, but I, I have it good enough now. It's not, I don't have all the dynamics all fixed up, but um, I'm gonna play you, not the whole piece right now, but I'm gonna play you an excerpt from it so uh, we can, you can get an idea of what we're gonna talk about and then we'll go back and, you know, talk about installing it, talk about setting it up, and here's some playback of it, and here's some playback of some other scores. So I'm just going to start from the beginning and play about two minutes worth, okay? So here we go. All right, I'm going to pause this here. As mentioned, it is a little quiet, but so here's one of the things. This is an orchestra score that, um, uh, you know, is uh, got a large dynamic range to it. If I turn up the volume now, it's going to be too loud uh, later, but that's okay. Uh, we'll, I'm just going to play this from MuseScore.com so we don't get those little glitches. It plays really well while I'm not streaming, I will say that. But I'm just going to start it over here, and I think this version will also be louder because I think it probably has, uh, uh, what do you call it, normalization applied. But I'll turn up the volume if necessary.
right, I'm going to pause this here. Ah, I think I'm going to pause it here. There we go. Now I'm going to pause it there. All right. So that was Muse Sounds. And um, uh, Muse Sounds sounds for, I think, all of the instruments in there. We got to hear, um, you know, I did not every instrument that Muse Sound has, but every instrument in this score has Muse Sounds. At Heist, yes, uh, I did actually turn up the buffer, although it is interesting. I didn't necessarily turn it up all the way because normally I don't need to. But I should. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, and then I.O. Oh, look at on this system, I didn't turn it up. Look at that. Well, I'm just going to crank that sucker up. And I'm just going to, just for grins, try to uh, play a climactic session, uh, a section here. Let's, uh, let's hear starting eh, somewhere around here. Nah. All right, so it's still going to be the case that while uh, while streaming, these large scores will uh, struggle a little bit for me, more than a little bit, right? So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to take little excerpts and things and worry more about little excerpts. So the... Um, the uh, let me show you again the setting, Bob, in case uh, you missed when I did that. Edit preferences IO. This is where you set this buffer size. This is also where you could select from different audio devices if your operating system presents different devices, but it's um. Uh, I don't have uh, fancy audio systems here to be selecting between. I basically can just select buffer size. So I've gone with the bigger buffer, and let's uh, hope that makes some amount of difference. So in any case, uh, that's the thing. And um, actually, since I did try to just play that part, let me just skip over to where that is on musecore.com so you can hear a big... Um, uh, kind of crescendo-y section here. Let's hear this. So there was there was a nice big uh, climax climactic section for you to hear. We'll we'll play a little bit more of this piece in a little bit. So um, as well as as I said other pieces. So what I want to do here now is I do want to show you how to get started doing you know using this so that you you all can uh, make use of it. So what I'm going to do is flip uh, off my screen share for a moment. And I'm going to screen share from my Windows computer. Uh, do, do one moment, and I will be uh, doing that. So, hmm? <clears throat> here I am. Can you all still see and hear me? I hope so. All right, I'm on my Windows computer, and I'm going to screen share from here now. So in order, I gave you in the newsletter the link, right, to download from. Uh, if someone wants to repost that, that would be really useful. Um, let's see, screen share, yeah, entire screen. Let me come back over here, and uh, I know my mic must be getting quieter when I do that. Uh, maybe I can swing the mic. Eh. I think you can handle it. Um, let me know if it's going to be a big problem. So uh, I'll stand back here where I think I'm better on, better more on mic here. So I've, I'm sharing my screen, and once you uh, once you get 
Muse score. Let's just go ahead and do this. Let's open a new window and I'm going to type musescore.org and just go here, support forum announcements about the beta release. This is the announcement where you get all the stuff from. So that's where to download from. Once you and you go through this and you'll see links uh, for Mac and Linux and some instructions, but I want to show you a little bit about what it's going to look like. And I guess I will try to swing my mic over so that I can be a little more on mic while I'm uh, while I'm doing this. So um, what I want to do to open Muse Sounds, you're going to see it down here on Windows in your uh, task bar area. It's not like a regular app. I mean, you can open it from, and I'm not a Windows expert, but you'll see it listed here. You know, it'll show up as recently installed or recommended or whatever. And I feel like I still need to uh, fiddle with this mic, but whatever. Um, and Muse, uh, Muse Hub is not yet working with screen readers, and this is true. They did just post uh, this morning some fixes that, you know, not they're not available yet, but they are actively working on it. So actively working on it. Um, so uh, let's see. Once I open MuseHub, this is what you're going to see. It's this window here. And it's not a regular window. You can't move it. You can't resize it. It's more like a notification window sort of thing. And so that's a little off-putting. And that's true on both Windows and on Mac. On Linux, it's more of a normal window. So you will see towards the top here is uh, where you can actually install MuseScore from. It'll say beta here, and this when you click this, it'll install MuseScore. And uh, down here is where the sounds are, and they're broken up into different categories. You'll see choir, brass, percussion, strings, keys, and woodwinds. Oh, and harp is a whole separate thing. So uh, harp is the easy download to get started with because it's the smallest of them. So if you just want to sort of test and make sure everything's working, download harp. It's it's just a couple hundred megabytes or something. If you actually click on these things, it'll tell you what instruments are in it. Oops. <laughs> click on harp. It tells you what the different samples are that are in here. There's plucked sustain and staccato. These are all different samples and so forth. And it tells you the size down here. You can see it's just 100 megabytes, right? So those are the instruments there. Let me just go through a couple other instrument lists so you can see. So for woodwinds, you can see there's flutes, piccolo, bass flute. There's a... Uh, um, Alto saxophone, baritone saxophone, they're, they're kind of, uh, oh, I see, multiple column order there. Alto flute, contrabass flute, really. Uh, English horn, uh, B-flat clarinet, E-flat clarinet, bass clarinet, really happy about that. One of my favorite instruments. Used to play it in junior high school, bassoon, etc. right? So um, a larger set of instruments than you might be accustomed to. So, um, and the harp sounds really good, I think. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, everyone thinks their own instrument sounds bad. Um, and because you're so used to your own sound and, and you're especially knowledgeable about it and know the quirks and all. Um, so as an outside observer, I think harp is one of the better sounding instruments in the, in the set. Um, and you heard a lot of harp, right, in my piece there. It's, uh, it's a very uh, harp-heavy piece that I uh, wrote there because I loved writing for harp. It was fun to learn about. I wrote that piece when I was getting my master's in composition. So what you'll do is just click on one of these things, and it will just start downloading. I already have them downloaded, but when you click on them, it will start downloading them. And what you'll find is it'll tell you the download speed. It'll give you an estimated time. And don't freak out if the first thing that you see uh, tells you it's going to take a week to download this thing. It's, it just takes a little while for it to really settle into the download and figure out how fast it's really going and so forth. And yeah, I've never tried using staff pad, so I, I can't really speak to that. So um, 
what I will uh, say is that the downloads, do, do expect if you download all of them, yeah, it's going to take a couple hours at least uh, to download all these things because they're big. The whole set is about 15 gigabytes. And uh, once uh, once you have them all down downloaded, they're downloaded, and then, you know, there'll probably be updates to, to download later. But, um, yeah, it's like 15 gigabytes of stuff. And so the woodwinds are the biggest one kind of by far. So uh, if you're not going to use woodwinds, uh, then, you know, skip that one and download what you want. So uh, once you've got those sounds downloaded, now I'm going to come back over to my other show, computer and show you how to set it up, and we'll listen to some more stuff. Stop sharing there. Start sharing over here. Okay, I am back and I am screen sharing over here. This is my, okay, so now here's the thing. This is what we were just looking at was my Windows computer, right? And, and I went over there because I figure that is the most common system that people are using, right? The majority of MuseCore users are on Windows. So I wanted to show what MuseHub looked like there. I'm on Linux and it's not just regular Linux, it's Linux running on a Chromebook, right? And it, it works pretty well. But I didn't want to demonstrate anything about the installation on my Chromebook system um, because, yeah, it could be a little wonky. But my Chromebook system is my most powerful system. You might think that's weird. You think of Chromebooks as toys for students, but no, there are some powerful Chromebooks out there and this is this is one of them. It just, you know, struggles while streaming. Um, and I think the Windows machine would also, although we can test that theory later. All right, so what I'm going to do now is come back to uh, MuseScore, and that's actually MuseScore.com. Come back to MuseScore, and we're going to load up another score, a simpler one. I am going to, okay, so first of all, here's MuseScore 4, looks different, right? If I go to the Home tab, this is kind of the equivalent of uh, um, uh, the Start Center in MuseScore 3, so you'll see recent files listed here. So that's kind of a, a nice thing to, to get used to, just click click the Home tab to get back here. And I want to actually check out a score that I've load, uh, been playing with lately. This is a vocal score, right? a choral score. And we're going to listen to this for a second. Uh, what I want to do is show you, I've already set this one up, to use uh, Muse Sounds, but I want to show you how simple it is in theory, and then we'll talk about the in practice. In theory, you go to View, Playback Setup, and then you'll see two choices, MuseScore Basic or Muse Sounds. If you have MuseScore Basic selected, you, you click it and then activate this profile. I don't know if double-clicking does that. It doesn't. Yeah, I feel like this dialog is a little awkward, so you click the thing, the profile you want, then activate, and then OK. And now you'll see the sounds all say MS Basic. So if we listen to this score now, we're going to hear the basic oh. built-in sounds. And here are the basic built-in sounds. And yes, new sounds are overall quieter than uh, average. So I'm going to uh, reset all my mixer uh, things here because I had done some fiddling with it. And uh, now let's listen to just a moment or two of the basic sound font. Right, I'll skip to where all the voices are in, or at least more voices are in, so we can hear something a little more interesting. Here we go. We'll start here. Right. Okay, so that's the basic, just the plain, normal sound font. Now let's switch over. I'm going to go to Playback Setup, and now all I have to do is click Muse Sounds, and then activate this profile, and then OK. Now you'll see, instead of saying MS Basic everywhere here, it says, well, sopranos, altos, tenors, and basses, because you can also individually, like I can click this little drop down here, and under Muse Sounds, you'll see there's brass, there's choir, there's harp, there's keys, there's percussion, right? There's all the things. Under choir, there's separate samples for altos, basses, sopranos, and tenors. So it automatically associated the right sounds with the right uh, um, 
the right instruments. And I'm going to bring my chat back and actually pin it so I don't miss anything uh, here. So pin or float, I guess it's called here. Now we're going to listen to that same passage using Muse sounds. So, um, in my opinion, these are the, some of the best choir sounds that I've personally heard, and I've heard a lot of VST instruments and so forth, and as far as just having a generic choir uh, sound, this doesn't sound horrible, right? But, you know, it's not going to be very convincing without lyrics. But for a basic choir sound, it works pretty well. I find that the tenors and the basses are a bit too loud, and so if I pull down the tenor and bass a little bit, push up the soprano and alto a little bit, I'm a little happier with the mix. So, are there solo voices? No, there are not solo voices in this uh, set here. There's just uh, what we heard there. All right, so that's uh, that's a, a sampling of what the, the choir sounds like. So the good thing is, you know, if you're using it, you can totally mix and match, right? If I wanted to have this particular, if I want the soprano, say, to be using a solo voice, then instead of Muse sounds, I can select sound fonts here to switch back to MS Basic, and now the soprano will be using the the solo. Actually, it's using the choir voice still. I would have to actually switch this to the solo voice instrument, which I can do. I can totally go to the instruments panel and open this thing up, replace instrument, and tell it to use, actually, I think it did. You know, to, to be honest, I don't know what it's using. Uh, I, I, I'm not positive. But it's now using the just the standard sound font. And uh, so you can totally mix and match like that. All right, let's go to some other things. I'm going to flip now to some strings, all right? Um, and when I flip to the strings, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm showing you this so that we can see um, a little bit of an issue that's kind of amusing. So those of you who follow me at all have heard this piece a million times. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start this thing and then stop it. And you all tell me what went wrong. Okay, So there is a problem with the solo strings. It's a, so it's a problem that I'm sure will be fixed and I can work around it. <laughs> but it's, it's actually a little funny to listen to. So let's listen to this. All right, they sound a little drunk to you. <laughs> What's happened is somehow some signals got crossed and all the solo strings are playing with permanent, what's called portamento, basically sliding. It's like, um, it's like sliding from note to note, it, right? And it's somehow, I mean, they, they recorded that and it sounds like good portamento, right? I mean, it's like, that sounds like good samples of some, if you ask someone to do that, uh, then that's, it's a pretty good imitation of that. But unfortunately, it got like somehow turned on by default. What we've discovered uh, through trial and error, um, cause, I mean, the developers know what they're doing and they'll, they'll fix it, I'm sure, is if I select all, control A, and then add a tenuto marking to everything, shift N, now, uh, by adding the tenuto marking, it 
resets uh, things so that uh, um, it won't play with Portamento anymore. The Tenuto marking defeats that and goes back to something resembling the normal playback. I'm not sure if that's going to change anything about how it interprets Boeing, because it's an, it's totally capable of interpreting Boeing, but I don't have bow marks on this piece. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's listen to this now uh, with hopefully a little bit better. That's a string quartet for you. By putting all those Tsunudo markings on it, I do think it's causing it to try to bow every note individually. So I, I won't assume, I think it'll probably sound a little smoother once they get that bug fixed and I don't have to have those explicit Tsunudo markings. But yeah, they're pretty good sounding strings, right? I mean, uh, let me just, oh, so here's one thing to know. Um, uh, oh, for, gazillion is like a slang word for bigger than a million, bigger than a billion. Um, so uh, in MuseScore 4, if you'd select a staff and, uh, you know, you just select a measure like this, if I select a note and press play, it starts playing from that note. So let me, hello. Have we locked up? Eh. Oh, that was interesting. Um, let me try to hit play now. Obviously, something went a little bit funny, but normally if you select a note, it starts from that note. But if you select a whole measure, then it'll just play that staff. Right, so uh, that it'll select just that staff. Or if you want to hear just the two violins together, select both of them. So, um, so by distortion. Um, I don't know if you're talking about maybe that I'm putting a little too much volume out through the stream here, or if it, they are pretty vibrato-y, I think, and maybe you're hearing that, or maybe you mean when you've tried it yourself. I don't know, Dean. Um, so anyhow, those are some string sounds. I want to uh, do something else now. Is uh, So Jim, hopefully uh, Jim Ivey might be here. Um, because I gave you a heads up that uh, I'd be, um, oh yeah, I need to unpin this thing. So, uh, Jim, I'm going to try to play your score now, and uh, I guess you'll check it out on the replay, because maybe you can't make it right now, but um, I'm going to load up Jim one of Jim Ivey's scores, and we're going to give that a shot, okay? So, if I load up... Um, uh, I'll just open another because I don't remember if I've opened it on this computer or not before. So, mm, I have a folder I created called Muse Sounds. And uh, there's several uh, different um, movements of this work here. And we're going to hear a little bit of it with the default sounds. And then I'll set it up with Muse Sounds, and we'll talk about that, look at the balance a little bit. So first thing, though, I want to do is play Jim's version of it, because Jim has it on MuseScore.com, and if I play it here, then um, you'll hear the version that he has set up. And he has set it up um, kind of, you know, specifically to, uh, you know, he's entered the dynamics that make sense in MuseScore 3. Uh, he's probably done some customization of velocity settings. I don't really know all the customizations that he's done, but he's happy with the sound of this in 3.6, and we're going to see if we can 
to what extent we can reproduce this. So let me play a little bit of it as it exists now in 3.6. All right, so that's the basic sound here. So what I'm going to do now is load it into uh, into MuseScore 4, and we'll go through the process of uh, setting it up to use Muse sounds. And what we'll discover is, you know, this is beta. This is beta, so don't be expecting perfection. And one bit of imperfection we're going to get right away is... Um, one bit of imperfection we're going to find out is that some of the instruments are not going to get set up correctly and we're going to have to fix it. So um, what I'm going to do is come to uh, view playback setup just like I did before and then say Muse sounds. By the way, notice you can set it as the default for new scores, but I'm not doing that. Just I don't know. I don't think that affects existing scores. I think it might literally only be for new scores. But, you know, I don't want my scores all changing in their sounds without me act actively saying, yes, I'm ready to do this now. So I'll select Muse Sounds, set it as the active profile, and hit OK. But um, you'll see it's going to start going through and... Uh, yeah, it's starting to replace. It's, it's having to load these sounds kind of one at a time, and it's loading these things up. And there's... Another bug that I might have to work around here. Let's see. Is it asking my permission here? No, it's just yeah, right here. This is a this is a problem with the woodwinds on Linux only, where it pops up an error message that you actually have to uh uh explicitly go to the terminal window and say, yeah, ignore that error. Um, and so that's like a, a bug on Woodwinds on Linux specifically. Again, they've already, you know, identified the problem, working on a fix. It'll probably be fixed within a few days. So let's take a look at what it's done here. It's set up piccolo for piccolo, flute one for flute one. Flute two hasn't updated yet. I don't know if it's still planning on it because I think that worked before. Um, I did say all. Um, but oboe has picked English horn. The E flat clarinet picked E flat clarinet, but the B flat clarinet also picked an E flat clarinet sound. So unfortunately, oh, flute flute two just updated, right? So it was still just working. So yeah, it, for a large score like this, it takes a moment to get all your sounds in, but they're pretty well all there now. Um, so I want to go and fix the things I need to fix. So the B flat clarinet is currently using an E flat clarinet sound. So I need to come over here to woodwinds and say, no, 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 use the B flat clarinet sound. And same for clarinet too, woodwinds, B flat clarinet. And same for clarinet three, muse sounds, woodwinds. E flat clarinet, right? So I'm going to have to fix a few of these things. The bass clarinet also. The bass clarinet was picking the uh, E flat clarinet sound, but there is an actual bass clarinet sound that I could be using. He's got a contralto clarinet. I, I've never even seen or heard of such an instrument, but apparently it exists in Jim's bands. So I'm going to come here and say Muse Sounds Woodwinds, and I'm going to have to guess it's closer to a bass clarinet than anything else, so I'm going to give it the bass clarinet sound. All right, so I'm going to, by the way, just flip over here, see if I see any comments from Jim yet. Yeah, I think Jim isn't able to make it. Um, but also notice that all the saxophones have chosen tenor saxophones. So I'm going to have to kind of go through, and this is all bug, beta bugs that, you know, aren't going to be there when the thing releases for real. But it's just part of what I'm going to have to do to get reasonable sound here. 
to get like the correct instruments. So woodwinds, alto sax, and then tenor sax is tenor sax, baritone I need to pick the baritone sax. And I actually did this before and saved it, but I somehow lost it. Cornet, it doesn't know cornet, but you know, I know a cornet is, you know, similar enough to trumpet that I can come to muse brass and pick the trumpet sound, right? Um, notice that for trumpets, it's actually picked the trumpet section. Even though he's got three separate trumpet parts here, it's just picked these generic trumpets sound. Realistically, to really do this right, it's not a whole lot of trumpets. It's three individual trumpets here. So I, I should select the individual trumpet. So this is all stuff that I shouldn't have to do, right? This is all beta bug stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just life with beta. So I'm going to, you know, fix these sounds and tell you about it as I'm doing it. Muse, brass, trumpet, B flat, trumpet, three, muse sounds, brass, trumpet. Okay, the horns are good. The trombones, it's also picking a section. I'm just going to not worry about that. Um, tuba's picked, right? Baritone horn, it picked a horn and F, which is a reasonably close imitation. Oh, he's got a tam-tam in here, which is a gong, and it's picking timpani for that. Uh, so I want to change that to the actual gong, because yes, there is an actual gong here. So percussion, gong. Um, and that's good enough for now. Oh, this percussion one, I think, is a bass drum. Let's 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 hear this. So yeah, let's let's hear. Now that I've set most of it up, other than the percussion, let's start at the beginning. So actually, let's just listen to that alto saxophone for a second. All right, it's going to be one of those where the score is big enough that it doesn't uh, doesn't like uh, playing this back while I'm streaming, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm going to make a recording of this later and post that so you can all hear it. But um, yeah, let's go ahead. I, what I could do is try to delete some measures and see if that helps. And when I can also just uh, mute some staves and see if that helps. <laughs> So let me let me do that. I'm just going to come here to the instruments panel, and now you can see how I'm going to do this here. Instead of actually uh, muting staves, I'm going to try something else. I'm actually going to just turn them off in the uh, um, instruments panel because that is going to also have the effect of. Uh... So I'm just going to turn off all these things that aren't the instruments that I care about right now. And see if that makes a difference because muting didn't seem to work didn't seem to help um did i get them all yeah i don't know it's it's being slow enough that i might have to uh um oh there you are jim uh good uh i didn't see you in the participant list which is why i was thinking you weren't here um so as far as the 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 thing with the trumpets goes so yeah that's a good point that you really should have it be a whole section right so in that case i'll leave it alone well i didn't leave it alone right i uh, i got lazy but you're right i'm thinking wind ensemble right in a wind ensemble it's one per part but you're thinking concert band which is bigger so yeah, unfortunately, it's it's being slow enough here uh, while I'm streaming that I'm. I think what's happening is every time I turn something on or off, it's having to recalculate stuff and uh, is not happy. So this that's unfortunate, but I will post uh, the audio so we can hear it afterwards. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to play right now um, while I'm doing this. Probably it's thinking too hard. So let's um, let's regroup a little bit and look at some of the other things that I wanted to talk about here. I want to come back to my piece, Dusk. Um, oh, I am going to go to uh, my piano piece, right? We're going to we're going to listen a little bit to Reunion, and um, 
just so we can hear the piano. The piano, I think, we all tend to think our own instrument is maybe the least effective, but I think that's actually like other people would agree, I don't know, that the piano in Muse Sounds is not anything to write home about. And it's art it articulates funny, is what I would say. It, it's not legato the way I expect. So um, let's hear Reunion um, sort of normal-like first. Right, this is normal sounds. And now I'm just going to switch over to Muse Sounds, Keys, Grand Piano. And we'll listen again. So it feels very, like, uh, over-articulated to me. I'm going to try the same trick of selecting all and just adding tenuto markings to everything. I'm just curious if that's going to make it articulate a little smoother. Eh, not really. I'm also going to try deleting the slurs to see if for some reason the slurs are actually causing a problem. It all sounds about the same either way. So in any case, the, the, the piano to me is nothing to write home about, but it doesn't disappoint me because piano is relatively easy to get right. There's lots of sound fonts that have good piano sounds in them. So um, the, uh, the piano sound in any sound font is capable of being good because it's not it's not as dependent on individual embouchures of different types of articulation, right? There's nothing to a piano except how hard did you hit that note and how long did you hold it for. Sound fonts are good at doing that. So there's any number of sound fonts that do a good job of that. So I'm going to come back to Jim's piece here and see if it's finished thinking about all the stuff it had to think about here and, uh, and just see if it plays any differently now. All right, still glitchy, right? But let's, I, I really want to, um, yeah, because this, this worked really well while I wasn't streaming, of course. And then while you while I stream, it just brings the system down to its knees, apparently. And um, uh, what I'll tell you about it is, so you, you got to see the work I had to do to set it up, right? Um, when I go to play it, it sounds to me a lot better, you know, you'll have to take my word for it for now until I post uh, my, uh, my result. Yeah, that's just going to be too glitchy here. Um, but the alto saxophone sound is, is a pretty good alto saxophone sound. The saxophone sounds sound good for classical music. They're okay for jazz. They're, to me, they, they're classical sounding uh, saxophones. But I'm going to go to a saxophone quartet and uh, so we can hear the saxophone uh, a little better. So this is going to be a saxophone quartet piece, uh, my wife's uh, song that she wrote for the school where she was teaching, the Carson Elementary uh, School song, and I had arranged it for saxophone quartet, and um, I might have to close Jim's score uh, because it's probably hogging some memory now. So I'm going to save what I did. Save the work that I did here and so that I don't lose all that setup. Oh, when you save a score, it's going to ask you, do you want to save it to your computer or to the cloud? There's this new thing where it will offer to just save to musicore.com, and then every time you update the score, it just resaves to musicore.com. But if you try to do that with Muse Sounds, it's slow because it's going to have to upload the audio every time, so I don't uh, personally recommend it. Um, So I'm going to not uh, be using the save to cloud here. I'll just save it to my computer normally. And uh, man, 
yeah, unfortunately, that seems to have uh, brought my system down. Just even just playing with it did. That's kind of unfortunate. But uh, save. Yeah. Well, let's see if with that window locked up, if I can still get the uh, Carson to uh, play here. Let's listen to some. Yeah, well, let's find out. So one of the things that I notice as I play this is it does do this jazz articulation thing of recognizing do dump figures and playing the second note short, but it actually overdoes it. It totally overdoes it. And that's, I have swing turn, you know, I have swing on. If I delete the swing marking, uh, it's a little less that way. Right. Right, so it doesn't. Yeah, it still kind of did that one short. So it, it tries to be smart about stuff like that is the point. It tries to put in, uh, it looks at the context. In other words, it doesn't just play individual notes one at a time. It looks at the surrounding context and says, hey, these are two notes slurred together. Probably that last note should be shorter. And so it has a lot of of intelligence about stuff like that. And then you can quibble, well, is it doing it too much or whatever? And um, anyhow, that's uh, um, what one of the things that this, that, that this business does. Now I'm going to close this score here. Um, the other thing that that enables it to do is I'm going to go ahead and create another score for percussion, and I want to show you some some percussiony things here because this is is actually kind of cool. Some of the percussion stuff that's possible here. So if I add unpitched percussion, I'll add a bass drum. I'll add uh, um, tam tam, which is the you know official name for what people normally think of as a gong, and um, we'll do snare too. So, I will add some 16th notes. And play these using the default sounds. Right? It's, it sounds kind of like... Right? It's like the same exact sound playing over and over again. Let me just pop back to the chat. So an easy way to um, override the AI. No, not really. Um, so the, the 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 what Muse Sounds does, it does in hopes of you not having to fiddle with it. If you prefer fiddling, you've got uh, VST instruments that you can fiddle with. Um, but Muse Sounds has all that stuff baked in, basically. So I'm now going to come to uh, playback setup, Muse Sounds, activate, okay. And now let's hear that same, whoa, that didn't sound like a snare drum at all, did it? Let's pop up, did it pick a snare? Tycho's, what the heck? Yeah, so obviously yet another case of it picking uh, entirely wrong sounds by default that's going to need to be fixed before they can release this puppy. Um, so concert snare drum is that. Yeah, in theory, that, that playback profile is supposed to just set all this stuff up, but what we're obviously seeing is it does a pretty bad job of it It's right now. All right, so that snare. So let's hear some snare now. So let me, uh, let me make that passage longer. What happens also when my system's struggling is it takes a couple seconds to get started. Come on.
So one of the things that you might have noticed there is it's not literally playing the same snare drum every time. It's using what's called round robin so that it sounds like two different sticks hitting and, and the one sound, the second sound that gets hit is different than the first sound because the, 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 the uh, head was still vibrating when the stick hits it. And so it's capable of understanding that kind of stuff, that playing two snare drum notes in a row doesn't sound like w the same sound twice. The second sound is different because of that. For similar reasons, if I make this be a dotted half note and give it a tremolo marking to tell it I want a roll, tremolos, let's put a three-stroke tremolo on it. Oops, I lost my selection. Select note, tremolo. Let's hear this thing now. Yeah. All right, let me uh, repeat that measure a couple times so we can hear it. you actually get a roll. You don't get <laughs> the machine gun effect of hearing that sucker with uh, just the basic sound font, right? If you want to hear that with the sound font, right? that does not sound like a roll. That, da -da 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 -da, that sounds like a machine gun. It doesn't sound like a roll. But if you switch it to the Muse Sounds uh, version of snare drum, then you'll actually get, you know, something that sounds, relatively speaking, like a roll. All right. Um, similarly, let's, uh, well, yeah. Uh, in Jim's piece, he has ba ba boom figures in bass drum and or timpani. And with the MuseCore default sound font, it's just boom, boom, boom. But where all three notes are the same length or the same, you know, sound. But when you hear it with Muse sounds, it's actually ba ba bum, and the second, the second hit is different, you know, because the the you know it's doing that round robin thing. So um, you'll have to trust me a little bit on that. But I I do want you to hear the uh, the tam tam because. It's pretty cool. Ah, uh, I didn't get it. Um, but it it's um that's weird. It says it's using the tam tam sound. Oh, I have to probably make it a whole note for it to actually sound. Let's try this. Yeah, not hearing it. Um, so I did hear it earlier, so something, not sure what's going on with my tam-tam either. But, you know, I still hear it ringing in the background, but very quietly. Maybe I need to put an accent mark on it or do something. But uh, it's a gong. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty epic-sounding uh, gong when it decides to work. So... Um, in any case, that's the thing. I, I uh, it's hard for me to demonstrate the sounds themselves because uh, they um, they don't like to behave while I'm uh, doing the stream, which is kind of unfortunate because uh, they are, you know, just um, uh, just resource heavy enough to not be happy while streaming. But trust me when I say when I'm not streaming. These the, these work about as quickly as the built-in sounds. They uh, they they work very smoothly without without a whole lot of hiccuping and so forth. So it's um, considering that it's these huge sound banks that we're dealing with. It's pretty impressive how smoothly they actually work. Um, what I want to do is just go back to musescore.com so I can play some of my uh, orchestra piece. Um, 
and hear a little bit more of it to kind of uh, finish things out. And I'll play, you know, be hearing it in the background while I talk a little bit. Um, so the place where I left off was right here. So let me play that climax and uh, kind of go from there. <laughs> So one thing that you might have heard is Di -di -da 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 -da. the trumpets, there's a couple of notes in the trumpets that kind of blah. And I noticed that on that hymn that I posted earlier also. next section is also good for hearing, you know, some individual instruments.
All right. Yeah, I was laughing because that high note in the flute and violins there, the vibrato there is clearly some sort of weird uh, glitchy thing in the samples. All right. So that piece has a lot to it in terms of, um, uh, you know, getting to hear a lot of the instruments and so forth and uh, you know, getting to hear what the clarinet sounded like, what the flute sounded like, you know, and so it's uh, what the trumpet sounded like, what the horn sounded like. You can really get a picture of of the sounds of these things and um it's kind of fun and just before i wrap up i'm going to play a brief passage of the actual recording of that this is the actual orchestra when i wrote this piece in college uh getting my master's degree we got it played you know uh by the orchestra there and so it's interesting to compare um but yeah it's it's um it's, it's, a, it's a fun comparison. Let me jump to where like some of the climax sections are. Here comes the climax. So when I listen to this, it's, and I hear the Muse Sounds version, I'm impressed at how similar they sound, really. Including the places where like, I completely overwrote for the brass. You get the idea. So uh, that's um, uh, that's Muse Sounds for you. So yeah, I'm going to wrap up here. Just wanted you to get to hear the rest of that piece because it had all those nice little features for the different instruments. And uh, let's come back and hear some uh, actual Muse Score Cafe theme music. If it wants to play or if whatever's going on on my uh, system that started uh, hanging up is gonna here we go all right so hope you enjoyed the session and yeah sorry that uh, that, that Jim's piece I wasn't able to really get to play there but I'll, I'll go ahead and get that finished up and posted so that I can you know you can check it out in the community and hear the playback uh, of it and uh, check it out so uh, this has uh, been this session of the Musecore Cafe next week will be the first week of the month so we'll be on uh, an uh, Ask Me Anything session, right? I do those once a month. First first Wednesday of the month is the Ask Me Anythings. So feel free to ask me anything about MuseScore 4 or MuseScore 3, and we'll see what we can do. And um, anyhow, uh, hope you enjoyed. Tomorrow's my music master class. Come back for that. We'll do some singing and uh, some, some talking. All right. See you later, everyone.